Hey guys. I, um, you know, I've been so vulnerable with you so far and I've got the whole celebrity thing going. So I just thought, why not share this part with you too? <laughs> why not learn from me in case you're headed down this road as well? Um, I started off, as you're about to hear, I started off with a podcast almost two years ago, I think now, um, geared toward true love but also um, to, you know, kind of showcase my talents and abilities and whatnot. And it, it kind of took off. <laughs> and then I started videotaping it like this um, for YouTube, for those of you who also like a visual when you're listening. And now it's about to go to the next level. <laughs> I had, um, I got a call from this place called uh, Business Talk Radio. And they said that, that I was that I came highly recommended for a program that they put you through. That's kind of like um, like when we heard Mountain Mamas talk about how they take you through this process kind of thing. It's like they had this little mini interview that they had me um, do with Elvis or my my David, and um, and this is on satellite radio, so there's like 78 million people listening. But basically. They put me through this little kind of mini interview or mini show that um, what was that? Um, that they had a bunch of like potential sponsors listen to, and I was highly rated, like nine point two um, nine point two out of ten. So they invited me to come back and do these half hour segments, and it's it's like a big complicated thing, and I just have a few minutes before I get on, so I'm not sure how. I can get into more detail and answer more questions for you guys later, but he just, um, you know, he explained to me how we're going to have like about 10 half hour segments. And then um, this first initial show, like a lot of the A-list sponsors are going to be listening to it and we'll see if I get a deal from it. And if not, it's going to keep going. <laughs> it's going to keep going through all these different tiers of sponsors and all these other different deals that could happen that are going to lead into like a longer term relationship with uh the sponsor that will um that that could become like a, a you know a, a regular a regularly scheduled program so this is the beginning this is potentially the beginning of of an of like branching off out of podcast to radio show so and the cool thing is that anybody in any country can listen. And I know I already have a lot of uh, people, a, a very wide audience already. So I know some of you are going to be very, very happy to hear that and that you don't have to call uh, you know, a phone line. You can just click on the links below this video to be able to listen to it live. Anyway, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick because he's about to call any minute. And all they've said is just be yourself. <laughs> and, um, and, and all this pressure is on this first show. So um, Whew, yeah, I'm going to have to like meditate for a moment before he calls, but I only have like a couple minutes, you guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go. All right, guys, I'm living my walk. <laughs> Feeling the fear and doing it anyway. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Whew. I don't know why I'm videoing this. This is, this is not helping. <laughs> Some of you that are about to make love offers, maybe you should tape it. All right. Hee <sighs> hee. Okay. Calling any second.
Can you guys feel my heart pounding? (sighs) I'm going to take a nap after this. Actually, I'm going to talk to the producer after this about any deals. Then take a nap. Hello? Hi, I'm looking to speak with Amy. This is Amy. Hey, Amy, this is Mike David from Business Talk Radio. How are you today? Hey, Mike David, I am good. So why do they call you Elvis anyway? Uh, it's a kind of a nickname, sort of a name that I was given. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was very involved with theater and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I kind of <laughs> resembled them, and my parents were also big fans, so I always had Elvis stuff around me. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm calling to see if you're ready to go on for your show. I'm ready. Excellent. And uh, just to confirm, I do have the name as Amy Satori. Is that correct? That's right. Awesome. And I have you down as a intuitive sp- spiritual teacher. Yes. Excellent. All right, and just so you know how the show typically goes, what I'll do is I'll introduce you, and uh, I just ask pretty general questions so people know what it is you do and your background and things like that. Um, And we do get a commercial break right in the middle, so you'll get a two-minute breather for yourself, and then uh, after the break, we just pretty much pick up where we left off. Does that work for you? That's great. Awesome. And do you have any questions for me before we get started? No, I talked to Billy beforehand. So I think I got the scoop. <laughs> okay, awesome. So just hang tight. We'll be live in just a moment, okay? Yeah. All right. My guest, Amy Satori. Amy, how are you today? I am beautiful, thank you. That is awesome. What's a, how is it in New York today? What's a, it's like there's <laughs> several feet of snow over here in Boulder. Oh, man. Uh, it's actually it's a little cloudy, but uh, no snow. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, Amy, uh, why don't you start with first putting out your contact info or whatever is the best way for my audience to reach out to you for after the show. All right. Um, you can email me at amysatori at gmail.com. You can visit my website, which is amysatori.com. You can find me on Instagram. That one's really kind of fun, the things I post on there. Um, that's Instagram forward slash amysatori. Imagine that. <laughs> and my phone number is 817-219-8831. Excellent, excellent. And, uh, Amy, we're definitely glad to have you with us. We're excited to get some insight and perspective from you. But for those who are maybe first time tuning into you or just may not be as familiar, if you don't mind, just going over what it is you do exactly and just a little bit about yourself. 
Well, I'm an intuitive a spiritual teacher. Don't ask me how I got there. <laughs> but basically, I started off as kind of like a, a Pied Piper as a kid. I was always pretty pretty intuitive, but didn't know it. It was so natural for me. I thought everybody talked to animals. And then as I grew up, I went through all kinds of um, incredible life experiences that just made me wiser and wiser and more intuitive as I went. Um, I was even a Bible talk leader at one point. And um, just and I went through an enlightenment experience for six months. It was like not like being a human being at all. It was pretty incredible. So I've been through all these incredible experiences, and then um, and I was in the corporate world at the same time for quite a while. And then finally, I I got a divorce about eight years ago, and just decided you know I'm just going to come out of the closet and embrace this thing. And I had learned qigong healing and. Um, I can pretty much, I can talk to inanimate objects, I can talk to your body, I can scan your body for any kind of emotional blockages that lead to physical ailments, um, and I can help anybody decide about anything. I can go into, like, if, if you have friends that you're not sure who you can trust, I can tap into your friends and just kind of feel into them and how they are toward you. I give people, like, business reviews, like, how they're doing at work, what their boss thinks of them. I help athletes become better athletes by what spirit tells them to improve on. I help uh, producers and directors with their uh, with their staff. I help actors um, and uh, authors and everybody with their creative process, basically. Any kind of, um, yeah, anybody who's doing anything creative, I can help them. And even kids in school that are trying to figure out, like, what they want to do with their lives, I can feel into what would be best for them, what would resonate best for them, help people figure out their life purpose, it's just kind of like once I embraced who I really am, it just exploded. <laughs> so. Wow, that is, that is so awesome. And and Thanks. now I got to ask, Amy, you know, how did you come to acquire all the knowledge that you have now? Did you have a mentor yourself or was it more so you going out and studying? What would you say? Well, after that enlightenment experience, I got, I kind of like I was only in it for six months and it was really painful to come out of that experience. So then I was kind of like desperate, like what is this enlightenment thing? Because it kind of happened by accident. I was reading Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth. And then um, I was like, what is this, you know, and, and what is all this energy? I just basically went through what people call an awakening. And I started studying a bunch of stuff, and I got really into, like, you know, Eckhart, Byron Katie, and all of those wonderful people. And um, it just really resonated more and more all the time. I was watching, um, developing my intuitive abilities, and then a friend of mine who – uh, with, we were friends for like 20 years, I think, and he kept encouraging me with all of this. And, and I was like, no, 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 I'm no big deal, I'm no big deal. And then um, he said, look, I'm going to, I'll produce a, a podcast for you for, for free, basically, because I just want to really need, I think you need to get out there in the world and, and get known. And it worked. <laughs> it worked. The podcast really, you know, kind of took off and, um yeah, it's been it's been quite the journey, and none, and it's the only thing I really have like I have like ferryologist certification, which is hilarious. I have certification in the law of attraction, and I ha I talk about crazy things like unicorns, leprechauns, and all kinds of things too. But um, the only thing I've really gotten certification in is like three levels of qigong healing. But I don't even use it like I was trained to use it anyway. I've made my own thing of it. So yeah, I would say not much education at all, just life experience. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Very cool, very cool. Now, Amy, when uh, someone reaches out to you for help, say, for the first time, uh, what is it that you're mostly coming across? Are you finding that there's one particular type of issue people are having or multiple issues? What is it that you're finding? Well, that was the thing that kind of um, – I'm glad you asked that because I was like, I didn't know quite what I was going to do with this when I first became what's called like a psychic reader for the Lighthouse Bookstore downtown Boulder. I was like, uh, uh, so I asked Spirit, like, give me a clue as to what this is going to be about. And I got inundated. I got the most readings, like I broke the record for the most readings in a day, and they were all about love. And then I was, then I was told, like, intuitively it would be about celebrities as well. And then that started to make sense because, some of the women that I was helping, well, divine feminines, I guess we could say, it doesn't matter the gender, but these divine feminines, you know, were coming to me, and they were becoming more and more successful. And so I started a celebrity series on my YouTube channel um, to help them, basically, 
uh, take people that were already super successful and and maybe even famous and kind of groom and help my audience to become, you know, blossoming themselves and to not be too afraid of it and to kind of know, like, what you're going to be signing and, like, how that process goes, what to expect and all that kind of thing. So it's been um, mostly people have questions about what to do next or about their love life. Mostly their love lives is their, is their favorite thing to talk about, I would say, when they come to me, or for healing. I do light language blessings as well. So um, some people just call to, to get a light language blessing um, to help them in a certain area of their life. So I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> Very cool, and, and it, is, it is interesting that you do cover a lot of ground there, which is great. Uh, and Amy, as you know, uh, there's many spiritual teachers that are out there, a lot of energy heals that are out there with different styles, approaches, and techniques, and things like that. So how would you describe your approach and kind of your style to helping people? Uh, well, the feedback that I get most often is that people read my about page and they can't believe how traumatic my past is and um, how many things I've been through. I just put up a video on YouTube about that, about all the trauma that I've been through, to encourage people that it doesn't matter what you've been through in your life. You can create a new start right now in this moment. None of that history has anything to do with who you are right now. So you can recreate yourself by not, you know, not dwelling on that stuff and not keeping bringing that stuff up. Heal it and then just move on from it and not make that about who you are. So I would say um, another thing re- people report is that um, I'm giggly and funny and silly and lighthearted. And it just, I have delta waves in my voice as well. So it's very reassuring and soothing to people as they listen to me. And oftentimes I put people to sleep because my vibration is very high and I do have those delta waves. So I'm really soothing for people. And when they see me in person and they, and they get to talk to me and have a reading one-on-one, they often cry because they feel like they can trust me and tell me anything. So I would say that's one thing. Um, and they say that just my level of in- integrity as well because I walk, I walk my talk and my uh, level of authenticity I, I was when everybody was saying that I was like, "What does that even mean?" My level, like, isn't everybody just themselves? <laughs> you know, and I was like, "I guess people do fake each other out, but it just seems like why do that? It doesn't make any sense. Why date somebody and pretend you're somebody else? They're just gonna figure it out eventually anyway, right?" <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And um, Amy, who would you say is kind of your ideal client? Is it someone that already knows or has some knowledge about? energy healing and spiritual growth, or is it someone that's maybe new and just open to your suggestions? Mm-hmm. Who, who would you say is your ideal client? My ideal client is kind of, it's kind of fun when they already know. Like I have a video that I put out called The Different Types of True Love. I love it when they come into me and they've kind of studied some of that. I'm writing a book right now, too, and I haven't, I haven't put that out yet, but um, the book is going to be about these different things that I've seen watching thousands of people and the patterns that happen with true love. And I love when they come into me and they're like, I think I have one soulmate and I have a twin flame and I think I've got a soul flame too. Like, which one do you think? And they've like been studying me for a while so they use my language and stuff. And then I'm like, oh, that's so great. We can go like right into it. I don't have to like explain anything. I'm just like, let's let's feel into all these guys. Let's see what's going on. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Now, Amy, of course, naturally, I have more questions for you, but we're going to go to a quick commercial break, and when we come back, uh, we'll get more information with Amy Satori. We'll be right back. Every business needs professionals they can trust. Let it be a lawyer, accountant, electrician. Even the company's plumber are all people you can trust. So why are you settling for your printer vendor? They never respond to your questions, and when they do, it's always late. Always seems to take an eternity to get your printing done and ready, but you've dealt with it because there really wasn't another alternative. That is, until now, Max Image Printers. Take the worry out of your printing needs. As a hybrid company, both on website and phone, they welcome clients, businesses of all sizes, to call and ask questions to make as many orders as you need. With the confidence of having your work printed, beautiful, and ready in just a few business days, bring the trust back into your printing. Maximize your printing experience with Maximum Image Printing. Call now at 801-977-8330. Email Keith at maximage.net. 
visit the website, matchimage.net. Match Image Printing, quality service, guaranteed. If you're not happy, you don't pay. Many of us want to find a way to help others, a way to give a little back out of the much that we've been blessed with. St. Joseph Catholic Church sends many needy students home for the weekend with food that they might not have been able to eat without the church's help. Their Backpack Buddies program feeds these children at a cost of about $1,000 every week. Give these children something on their plates and give their parents the peace of mind of not having to worry about their children going hungry. Go to stjosephjasper.com or visit their Facebook and Twitter at St. Joe Jasper. Contact Mike directly at mike at stjosephjasper.com or call 812-482-1805. St. Joseph Catholic Church, food for every child. You are listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. And welcome back to the show. Of course, I'm your host, Mike David. Joining me again is Amy Satori, a professional intuitive spiritual teacher. Now, Amy, of course, before the break, uh, we got to know you a little bit more and kind of your approach to, to helping people. And uh, one of the things that you've mentioned uh, quite a few times is that you help people find true love and, and, and the relationships they're looking to have. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and, and what would you say is kind of the key to finding something like that? Um, well, you can meet them prematurely, but basically um, there's always a runner and there's always a chaser, for lack of a better term. I'll be calling it something different in my book, but um, basically two people are all giddy, excited about meeting each other or even seeing each other online, um, and they just they have this incredible connection, and then one of them runs away and the other chases after and they both have their own journey that they go on. The the masculine one has to face uh, people pleasing and working. Like he he puts all of his worth on wh- how much money he has, and he works really 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 hard. And he thinks that that's you know going to bring him his happiness and people pleasing everybody. And then the feminine one, whichever one is is chasing after him, <laughs> she goes over after her own insecurities uh, when he when he's inevitably going to run away and kind of just ghost her for a while. It's called a separation period. And the feminine one goes through her own insecurities and fears about like why did why is he not talking to me anymore? Is it because I'm ugly? Is it because I'm not good enough? Is it because our age difference? Is it you know they come up with everything? Both of them go through this tremendous healing in a pretty short uh, it can be a short amount of time. They go through this tremendous healing because of their draw to each other, and they essentially come back together at some point in time. And depending on their level of maturity. And their their um, how they can take personal responsibility, or if they can, it determines how they can and if they can stick together. Now, that's this is only for like twin flame type relationships, like the ones you find in romantic comedies. You also have soulmates; those are really easy and comfortable, and no problem. And those are just like you know, those are the ones you meet in high school and stay with the rest of your life till you're 80. Anyway, so um, the whole gist is if you if you can take personal responsibility for yourself. And if you're mature enough to handle it, then you can then you get more sticking power in that relationship. But they're kind of known for going through like this this thing where they come together, go apart, come together, go apart, until they can kind of you know it can take years for them to develop to a point where they get over their fears and insecurities and they can actually be together. Very interesting stuff. <laughs> yeah, well said. Now, now, is there ever a moment where where people will come to a realization and know? when they found the one? Is there anything like that or anything that oh, yeah. indicates something like that? Well, they come to me feeling like they're crazy. That's the comment that I get the most. Oh, my God, I'm so glad I can talk to you because I thought I was going crazy. They 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 have this sweet connection. This is usually the feminists that come to me, at least for a while, that when the masculines start to mature more, they'll start coming to me. But the feminines, they come to me and they're just like, I'm seeing numbers everywhere, signs and synchronicities. I see the a license plate or a sign with their name or their state where they're from. It's like the universe is trying to like blare at me. This is the one. This is the one. It's like you get inundated with all these signs. It's very paranormal, supernatural experience. 
and you feel like you almost can't escape it. And it's like even these these feminists will try to put the masculine out of their mind. It's so cute to hear them talk about each other. I just have to say, dude, that when they say each other's names, it's so cute. But they, so it is very different, and it's like you connect at this really childlike, innocent level where you guys are just like. I don't know, like a couple of children being really sweet and innocent together and kind of playing together. And and they see this kindness, this like essential spirit in that other person where it's it just feels really natural, really easy and really sweet. So that's what makes it stand out, I would say. Mm-hmm. And and what would you say or what is it that you find to be the biggest obstacle for people coming together? And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, runner chaser dynamic as well. Yeah, um, fear. Fear is always the thing that gets in the way. The masculine will say um, they will completely deny the feminine. They will say, "I only want to be friends." I oh, they'll completely reject her and say, "I don't have those feelings for you." And the only reason that I know that they're lying is I've seen it time and time and time and time again in the cards, and then actually talking to the masculines behind the scenes and seeing what they really think and what they really feel, and they're outright lying. So, the, and it's just that they're afraid. The masculines are so afraid that they're fem- that they're going to get with this girl who could completely annihilate them if they actually gave their complete heart. So they guard it and guard it and guard it for as long as they can. And it's kind of like in the never-ending story when they walk through the sphinxes and they have to kind of go, so they have to be this knight that passes the test and walks through and he has to be brave enough to walk through. That's what they have to go through essentially to be with their feminine. And their their biggest fear is that the feminines are just going to find them out to be a fraud, and then later on they're going to be like, oh, I found somebody better. And that could be, like, that's not even close to the case. These feminines are so hooked on this masculine, there's, like, almost nothing that they could do to shake their love. And they don't feel worthy of it either. So, and then on the feminine's part, um, the block would be, like, like really getting the skepticism getting to them, like, really feeling like, oh, no, this isn't real. He doesn't really like me. He's totally ghosting me. There's no way, you know, so they push it away, too. Or they get so angry that by the time the masculine finally gets the courage to come, they are pretty pissed off, and they're just like, what, who, what do you want? You know, and they have a total attitude, and they push the guy away, and then it turns into this whole song and dance that can go for a long time. So that's why, like, on my channel or on my uh, on the Satori show that I have on YouTube and on Podbean and Spotify, um, I really encourage people to make it about a spirit, their spiritual growth, not about getting together with this person, but about, like, what are you getting triggered on and how can you heal and how can you become empowered and how can you feel, how can you be the best possible version of yourself right now? And how can you heal him for what he's doing? You know, forgive him for what he's doing. Heal yourself, your own issues. And that just, they have, like, they're energetically connected. So as one grows, it helps the other to grow as well. So I just help everybody focus on, on the bigger picture and, um, you know, coming together in their level of maturity and their ability to love unconditionally. And then it can spread out from there. Gotcha. Now, <laughs> as we're nearing towards the end of 2019, going into 2020, uh, there seems to be a lot of people that will argue that because of the state of how technology is and, and the way things are going financially with society and things like that, that it's a lot harder to find true love. Do you, do you agree with something like that, or or, <laughs> or do you think something else? Oh, it's something completely different. <laughs> None of that even matters because love will find you. You can't get away from it if you tried. It's the craziest thing. You don't have to go online dating. You don't have to go looking for it. It's like you're going to be drawn to that person. And a lot of people um, meet their person online. They see them on YouTube and they're just like, wow, she feels like a kindred spirit or he feels like a kindred spirit. And this little magical dance happens. They'll even start like they'll follow each other on Instagram and they'll send these cute little messages. But I've heard the most incredible stories of like, like that movie comes to mind, Serendipity. It's like that. It's like you can't, you can't avoid it, but you really do have to, have to, when you focus on all the obstacles of, oh, I can't find true love because of this. I can't find true. I can tell you're a masculine, by the way, Elvis. (laughs) because <laughs> you, they're very much like geared towards like the obstacles here's why I can't find love you know 
and you, and you got to like both people have to just be uh, have a really open mind and stay in a positive state of mind and not focus on the obstacles but be solutions oriented in order to have like that open space and use the law of attraction for anything to be possible. So it can happen any way, anyhow. It could be somebody that you just randomly run into when you're getting your cell phone fixed. You know, it could be anything. Right. Yeah, well said. I I definitely agree, for sure. And uh, now, you mentioned uh, you are having plans for, for a book. Can you tell us a little bit about that and kind of what the goal is for that? Wow. <laughs> You know, it's like I've been putting it together for so many years, and it's really not solidified yet, but it's just, it's amazing the patterns I've seen with true love. So I think it'll talk a bit about my history to kind of give people some confidence that, like, I'm nothing special. I've been through hell and back, you guys. Like, there's, you know, it's not like I've lived some kind of privileged life. And then boost their confidence in in believing in this whole true love dynamic, because I've seen it so many times and in, in so many different ways with so many different couples. It's just... It's amazing the bridges that they will gap for this love. And it's amazing the feelings that they have behind this person that they're striving to be, to be, um, what, like, to be better for in their, in their own way. And it's just, it's such a special connection. You guys would not even imagine, like, the stories that I get to hear all the time on a regular basis. So there will be some of those stories in the book and there will be, you know, how to become empowered, how to make this about your spirituality, how to work on yourself. Um, I also have a a playlist called Talks About Life that help you not worry, help you to become a better uh, listener for when you do talk to the person, how to work through issues when you do fight, and things like that to to really kind of, all of that's going to go in the book. Everything that's been helpful on my YouTube channel is basically going to be put in a book. Very cool. Seems like you have a lot to look forward to, and uh, we were definitely looking forward to uh, hearing more as as time comes uh, about your book and things like that. And uh, Amy, what would you say is kind of next for you, aside from the book? uh, Do you have have any goals, anything that you're looking to accomplish, uh, looking to grow in certain areas? What would you say? Well, I feel definitely like a a regular radio spot coming up. Um, A TV show is probably in the works. I feel, um, I do feel like my true love counterpart and I will have like some awesome projects that we'll be helping humanity with or, or helping in our own special way for people to evolve and grow and be empowered. So yeah, lots of fun stuff coming up. Sounds good. And uh, once more, Amy, where can people go to get more information about you and your services? Uh, they can go to amysatori.com. If they want to watch my, my playlist, they can go to YouTube and just put in Amy Satori, look for um, the white logo with the pink lotus on it, and just click playlist. Um, they can go to Instagram, forward slash Amy Satori. They can call me at 817-219-8831, or they can email me at amysatori at gmail.com. Excellent. Well, Amy, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to share uh, your knowledge and share great value with our audience. I really do appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time with me. Yeah, no problem at all. We definitely look forward to next time as well. And for everyone else out there, please stay tuned. We're going to be right back. Hello, Amy. Hey. Hey, just wanted to say awesome job, and you're all set. Thank you. All right. Have a beautiful day. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Okay, so here's where I wait. Here's where I wait for the producer of the show to call me back and let me know how I did. And this is where we find out if I got a deal or not (laughs) or how many deals. So I'm going to keep the camera rolling because I anticipate he's probably going to call back any second. He really, we really like each other a lot. So he's already told me your issue and you're a, you're a line up, you're a, what do you say call a lineup for sponsorship? You're in line for sponsorship. He goes, I just know you're going to get a deal right off the bat. So we're going to let him go ahead and talk to some people, whoever's calling him right now. Oh, somebody just, <laughs> somebody just messaged me and said you were she goes, yes, you were so engaging. Yay. Thank you, Tina. You're so sweet. 
Thanks for listening, those of you who listened live. That's very sweet and supportive of you. I really appreciate that. Okay, so. No, 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 no. I might end up editing out if this takes too long. I might edit out the wait. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to have that over. <laughs> this is gonna be so easy from now, from now on. The next, uh, the next show, they should have. Um, they should have callers calling in. That was just like the preliminary show. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get the recorder going for him to call. I don't know how much of this I'll be able to share with you guys. I might have to mute some stuff out. I don't know. <laughs> but maybe I'll just put in like little snippets of what he says or something in there. Because there's some stuff to be kept private. So I, I guess I'll explain the tiers that he explained to me. Um, so there's like a list sponsors that that pay like most of most of the show, whatever show they're sponsoring, which I don't have a show yet, but it would be like on the tail end of these 10 uh, segment ten, 10 half hour segments that I'm going to do that end like in the beginning of February, I think. Um, so then there's like another tier of sponsorship underneath that, like, like there's an A tier and then there's like a B tier and the, and they only cover like 60% of the show or something like that. Then the next category would be like, they cover maybe 30% of the show or, you know, it just goes, goes on from there. And so the people who are, who they understand the importance of consistency of like, if they get to know me during this 10 segment thing then the the audience is going to lose me if i if i let there be this gap between that and whatever i'm about to do next so they want it to be congruent and to keep going so these a list sponsorships like they, these this a list it first dibs because they pay the most <laughs> so they will make you the offer right away because they want it to come in at the tail end of that 10 segment period and so that they can just start right off with the 11th segment and just keep going from there and then it can build they all, he also talked about like wanting to get me on a TV, on a TV show. It's like a late night TV show in New York, based in New York. So they said they'd fly me out and put me up in a hotel and have me come on their like late night program. And then that would be like uh, similar to what happened today, just asking me a lot of questions, interviewing me and things like that, but it would be on TV. So he asked me if I was okay with that and I said yes. Um... He also said that there that obviously you can only take one offer. If there are multiple offers, you have to choose which one. Um, that makes a lot of sense, of course. And they also said that when these people reach out and make an offer to you, they also simultaneously may make offers to a number of people. So it's like first come, first serve. <laughs> so you got to jump on an offer as soon as it comes. If it's really, if it resonates with you, don't feel pressure though. Here we go. Hello? Hey, it's Billy. How are you? Hey, Billy. I'm good. Thanks. Excellent. Um, the, the show definitely came out well. There's no question about that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I apologize. Let me just grab a water real quick. Can yes. you hold on one sec? Yeah, of course. Oh. Okay, so uh, I got some good news and some bad news. Okay. All right. Um, what you want first? Bad. Bad news. Okay. So the bad news is is that you can only choose one of the offers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the sure, bad news. Sure. You can only choose one of these. <laughs> okay. Good. Good, good news is uh, you have three different offers to choose from. Yay, okay. Wow! Um, two, two, two of them got emailed me, emailed to me before you even went to commercial break. Uh, the last one came in right before uh, the end of your show. 
All right. Wow. So okay. we, we have three different offers, which is awesome. Um, like I said, sometimes people get to, um, you know, once in a while. Uh, it's kind of shocking that you actually have three, to be quite frank with you. <laughs> All right. So um, let's, uh, let's go over these offers. Let's, um, are you familiar with drones? Yes. Okay, awesome. I say it like that because I just went out and I I just uh, was taking snow off my car. Yeah, I was taking snow off my car recently and a drone came hovering watching me. Oh, really? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, That's interesting. What what they do is they they would be considered a high-end photography company, okay? So say you're having a wedding outside or say you have real estate for sale. Mm-hmm. You would call a company like this. They would send a person out to that location, and they would send a drone up in the sky to do all sorts of video footage and still footage from the sky. That's what they would do. So any kind of outdoor events, uh, real estate for sale, anything along those lines. Anything that, that is so ironic. <laughs> yeah, that, that, is, that, that is pretty ironic. You, uh, and I just said something on Instagram that? complaining about it, yeah. <laughs> like this this drone, the, the always way. following me the, around. <laughs> The, w- the way you said that, I was like, um, is this something that I don't know here? Like, uh, I know. I'm like, it's you know what I mean? like watching me. <laughs> yeah. Well, so uh, I'm all into unicorns, so Pegasus is the next next best thing to a unicorn. And being that drones just came up for me, I would say that's a sign, too. So. Yeah. I'll say yes. That's, I'll that's, say yes. Uh, honestly, that's pretty, uh, the, that's pretty intense, that... That, that's the company that's interested in you, and you just uh, kind of had a little incident with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, yes. uh, that, that could definitely be a sign. There's no question about that. And I just pulled three cards, just so you know. <laughs> and there's, one of them is the chariot. It says, charge ahead with confidence. Stay, stay strong and focused. And then I got the star card. Hard times are over. Look forward to an abundance of happiness, enthusiasm, and positivity. Well, I, I, I would say that everything is pointing to this then. Uh, between, between the cards, between your incident, we'll call it, with the drone. And, you need to tell them. Um, that'll be funny. Yeah. I, I, listen, I'm going to definitely relay this to them. I will definitely, definitely, definitely inform them of this. And they'll probably turn around and say the same thing you did. It's a sign. It was meant to be. Ha <laughs> that's cool. Can you tell how many people were listening today to that? Here we are. So audience numbers for the program, you had mm-hmm. about 111,000 that listened in throughout the show. Exact number? You've got to be kidding me. Okay, no, 110 what? I didn't give. 110,832 is the exact number. Uh, so, like I said, that number could be off, uh-huh. where it could actually be more people than that. Okay? Yeah. Now, average listen time for the program mm-hmm. is just under 19 minutes. So, okay. what, what that tells me is that the majority of those people that listened in, listened uh-huh. in to the entire program, okay, versus uh, people that listened in for just one or two minutes throughout the show. Oh, good. Because some, okay. somebody that listens in for one minute, two minutes, three minutes, 30 seconds, whatever it may be, is going to affect that average number a lot more than somebody that listens in for the full 30 minutes during the program. Okay? Okay. So the average, so the average um, listen time of just about 19 minutes, that is phenomenal. That I will Yay. I, um The audience numbers are great. I'm not going to say they're phenomenal. I can't say they're phenomenal. Okay? Um, I've seen more on somebody's first show, but I have not seen a lot more. Uh, I think the highest I've seen is like 180 and 190 on somebody's first show, just to give you okay. an idea. So you're definitely up there. Uh, those numbers. And that could have to do great. with time too, right? Yeah, it could have to do with a lot of different things. You know, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of different factors when it comes into it. You know, we're just getting out of the holidays, a lot of people traveling, stuff like that, airplanes. Uh, there's a lot of different factors as far as being on today with it. Okay. Okay. Um, but overall, those are great numbers. There's no question about it with this. Okay? Awesome. And ultimately, those are the numbers that is really going to 
be the make or break throughout the series of shows is your audience numbers because when it comes down to it, that's what the sponsor is paying for when it comes down okay. to it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> wow. All right. Well, here we are. That's how you do it. <laughs> That's how you walk through the fire. <laughs> three offers, three offers. So I now am officially sponsored by Pegasus Drones. <laughs> Isn't that funny? How ironic is that? So, or maybe not ironic at all. <laughs> But it's pretty funny because as much as I talk about unicorns, uh, yeah, that I would go with a company called Pegasus. <laughs> That's funny. So it looks like I'm going to be doing my show through June 22nd now. It's now been put out another 20 shows. And um, so, wow, yay. So I'll, um, yeah, I'm putting this up and... Yeah, the links are going to be beneath these videos for the next time if you want to listen again on Mondays at 1.30 Mountain Time, 3.30 Eastern. And thank you guys so much for being part of this. How exciting that you get to actually like watch somebody kind of blossom and bloom into what they're becoming. And, um, you know, hopefully some of this information will help you in going through your own um, process. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.